casting rumors be gone, we finally have an official announcement for the Fantastic Four. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. Today's a big one. We're talking about the Fantastic Four cast from Marvel Studios as it's finally been revealed. That's right, today is Valentine's Day in the year 2024 and Marvel Studios has officially announced who's playing who in the Fantastic Four. Before I dive into all that casting news, be sure to hit that like button, it helps out more than you guys know. Subscribe into that notification bell to help reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. I mean a lot, I'm so close to making that final push. And go show some love to the unusual couple podcasts for weekly episodes with myself and my girlfriend Cam. I'm sure we'll be talking all about this in next week's episode. All right, so ever since Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness came out back in May of 2022, we as fans have been speculating who's going to be playing who in Marvel Studios' The Fantastic Four, because obviously in Multiverse of Madness, we see John Krasinski playing Reed Richards. Everyone's initial reaction was, oh, okay, they're teasing us here with Krasinski, and then he'll obviously take on that role in the feature film. That's not the case, as he turned into string cheese, but then we were still holding on to hope that, oh, maybe this was just a variant of him, and a variant still played by Krasinski can lead a movie. That is for sure not the case anymore as we found out who's playing Reed Richards today. Marvel Studios and Fantastic Four posted this on Instagram and Twitter. It's a poster for the film, but going from left to right on the far left, we see Eben Moss Backrack as Ben Grimm slash The Thing. This is perfect casting in my mind. Eben Moss Backrack is a versatile actor who's proven that he can play someone who's got a short temper at times. We know The Thing can definitely have that. He crushes it as Richie Jeremovich in The Bear, but also he's great as David Lieberman in The Punisher and even has a supporting role in Andor season one and he knocks it out of the park there. I'm elated that Evan Moss Backrack is joining the MCU. Now it's time to get Carmi in the picture, Jeremy Allen White. Next to him, we see none other than Joseph Quinn as Johnny Storm slash the Human Torch. They even add a little blonde into his hair. I love to see it. But this is without a doubt one of the more controversial casting choices for this Fantastic Four lineup. Joseph Quinn's most popular role is as Eddie Munson in Stranger Things, specifically in season four of the show. That season was a massive hit and I adore the show, if you didn't know. But he's fantastic as Eddie, and like less than an hour total of screen time, he stole everyone's hearts and became a fan favorite before his untimely death at the end of season four. But he made the most out of every single second of screen time and became one of the most lovable characters in the entirety of a four season show. So I have the utmost confidence in Joseph Quinn to come into this role and do the same damn thing. I don't know why people are doubting it. A lot of the negativity surrounding this casting choice comes from people who are upset that it wasn't Rudy Pankow or another popular actor, but we have to have faith in Marvel Studios casting, I think. When Joseph Quinn played Eddie, he was able to portray this charismatic, likable dude who was a leader to a group of characters who felt like they had no place in Hawkins High School. He was a shining light for a lot of people out there and made people feel welcomed. Now, while I understand Johnny Storm is a vastly different character, there are certain traits of Eddie that I see in Johnny Storm. Notably, that rebellious attitude. We see that in Eddie Munson when he gets up on the lunch table and does his whole spiel. But Eddie Munson as a character also has those lines where he's flirtatious naturally charming, and is able to sort of win over the room. And those are all traits apparent with Johnny Storm. Obviously, there'll be a little bit more of a cocky, hotshot attitude associated with it, but I trust Joseph Quinn fully to come in and crush this role. A lot of people out there also just associate Eddie Munson with cringe for some reason. It's almost like they missed the point of Stranger Things 4. People got mad that Eddie became a popular character and had his own fandom, and so automatically people are like, oh, that's cringe, when in reality, Eddie Munson is a character who makes people feel welcome welcomed if they view themselves as outsiders, he like welcomes them in. And so people got comfortable in the real world posting in Eddie cosplays and embracing the Hellfire Club gear and all that jazz and people shamed them for it. So it's very strange to me that it translated from the show to the real world. So like in the world of Stranger Things, you've got the bullies at Hawkins High like Jason who pick on and call Eddie Munson a freak. And that energy somehow became a thing in real life with people picking on Stranger Things fans, specifically Eddie fans. And it makes no sense to me. But I digress, Joseph Quinn will knock this role out of the park. And the same can be said for Vanessa Kirby. That's right. She is going to be playing Sue Storm slash the Invisible Woman in the Fantastic Four. Over the past few years, Vanessa Kirby has quietly become one of the stronger actresses in Hollywood. She was nominated for an Oscar, but also she's played a pivotal role in the most recent Mission Impossible films as the White Widow. And when I watch Mission Impossible and see the White Widow character on screen, I'm like, yeah, I see her as Sue Storm 100%. Like of these four casting choices, I might be the most sold on Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm. But then there was only one to talk about, and that is the elephant in the room. It's the most popular 
popular, the most divisive online. Pedro Pascal himself has been cast as Reed Richards slash Mr. Fantastic. How can you not love Pedro Pascal, right? He's Din Djarin slash The Mandalorian. He's Joel from The Last of Us. The man doesn't miss. He's naturally charismatic in real life and on the screen. And because of that, he's become one of the biggest stars in the world right now. He's an internet sensation who's all over the memes, but also he's just a damn good actor and a likable dude. He has his fans from various backgrounds of different ages and different generations all around the world. So on the one hand, Marvel landed a massive star who will have that appeal and get butts and seats. But on the other, I also go, was this just the safest choice? Did Marvel just say, hey, we need the biggest star in the world right now. Let's go get him, as opposed to actually going on the hunt and finding someone who could crush this role. It's hard to say. I firmly believe Pedro Pascal can own it as Reed Richards, but he wasn't my first choice. There were like 10 names thrown around for Reed Richards over the past two years, and he was never one of them. And so in a way, it almost feels out of left field that they just went and snagged one of the biggest stars right now. Again, I love Pedro Pascal. I think he will do well. But I also just have to watch this movie and see how he does before judging a casting decision. I mean, when Robert Pattinson was cast as Batman, people flipped out. The same can be said for Ben Affleck. And today, a lot of people say those are like the top two Batman. So we got to just wait this thing out. He's a more than capable actor. He's got the star power. I think he'll be just fine. Now, do I buy into these actors as Marvel's first family? Again, it's hard to judge that right now because we have to wait and see the final product. So yeah, after months and months of endless speculation regarding who's playing who in Fantastic Four, we finally have the answers. We've got Evan Ross Backrack as The Thing, Joseph Quinn as a Human Torch, Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm, and Reed Richards himself as being played by Pedro Pascal. Now with this casting news, we have a few other things to talk about regarding the movie itself. First and foremost, it looks like the actual title of the film is officially changed to The Fantastic Four, but that's a big win. Every other film has just been Fantastic Four. Adding The in front of it clearly separates it from the others, and also The Suicide Squad, The Batman, The Fantastic Four. Let's do this thing. They're always better films. But one of the most important details is on this poster that Marvel Studios dropped, it looks like we are going back in time. That's right, seemingly this film could take place in the 1960s. It's been making the rounds on social media, but if you zoom in to that magazine that The Thing is reading, it is a Life magazine from December of 1963. So again, seemingly this film is going the period piece route as we will have a superhero film from Marvel Studios set in the 1960s. We had the first Avenger set in the 1940s, and we had Captain Marvel in the 1990s, but setting this film in the 60s is huge for two reasons. Number one, it automatically sets itself apart from the crowd. The rest of the Marvel films take place in modern day. This is in the 60s, so it's retro. It's vintage in a way. But the most important detail is this. It all but guarantees that this Fantastic Four lineup and this film is taking place in a different world, still in the MCU, but not in the main timeline. My mind immediately thought of the Marvels. Spoiler alert, but at the end of the Marvels, Monica Rambeau ends up in a different universe. We see Beast is in that universe from the X-Men, and my mind is thinking, what if the Fantastic Four are just in that universe? This cinematic universe has established variants in different universes all around the MCU, and I think with the Fantastic Four, we're going to see that, because you can only have so many superheroes in one main timeline. And considering the timeline of our main MCU world, to have not acknowledged the Fantastic Four to this point in time would be insane. Like, I think the only way they can do a Fantastic Four movie in the MCU is to have them in a different universe. And I think they'll follow suit with that when it comes to the X-Men later down the road. But again, I'm sure all these questions will be answered when we actually see the movie. And the fact that we actually have this casting news feels surreal because it's been a long time coming. But I'll end by saying this. Is this the most anticlimactic casting announcement for a big Marvel project in a long time? It might just be, but I do think Marvel just had to act fast because it was leaking everywhere. I'm sure they would have much rather waited for a Comic-Con or a D23 event to bring everyone out on stage. They can still do that. It won't be as big of a surprise. But yeah, it's a very strange feeling because we kind of already knew this weeks and weeks in advance. It was just unofficial. Now it's confirmed and we can actually start getting excited for this movie that comes out next year. July 25th to be exact. So yeah, that does it for this Fantastic Four official cast announcement video and my thoughts on the news. What do you guys think though? Do you love or hate the cast? Are you excited for this movie? Could you not care less? Let me know in the comments down below and of course hit that like button. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. I mean a lot. I'm so close to making that final push but that's going to do it. Thank you guys as always for watching and until next time we'll see you guys later.